I wanted to talk to you this week about how you can start planning an image sequence, be it a storyboard or an illustration or whatever that you might want to create and certain steps that you can take to make your process a little clearer, to make it um, a little simpler that you can follow step by step, things to keep in mind and um, and things that will, will end up uh, saving you time and and um, creating a better product. So we're going to look at mind mapping, um, something I called sketch sketch exploration, <laughs> and um, this is exploring through drawing, exploring through sketching and thumbnailing, and then thinking about research and referencing. So how do we do that effectively? Different processes that you can follow and techniques. So the process that I'm going to show you. Uh, involves a few key steps and there's a bit of organicness to the way it all works together but essentially you've got this mind mapping and ideation process which um, I'll show you where you sort of coming up with ideas and possibilities a very wide net um, based on what you want to have as an outcome and this process of thumbnailing and sketching and so these are kind of um, they'll work together as you'll see and then also research and reference collation um, so all of these three first points are kind of symbiotic in a way they'll all inform each other and work together and once you finish with that it's a process of iteration and the way that you iterate is um, the medium and, and whatnot will change but there needs to be a process of iteration you're rarely going to come up with the right idea in the first instance it can happen, but it's 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 relatively rare. So let's look at mind mapping. So whenever I'm starting a project, whenever I've got to plan anything larger projects, in this case, um, teaching delivery for uh, a couple of units that I convene, one of these you will recognize. Uh, and so the way I start this is to just get a very large sheet of paper and then list down uh, all of the things that I need to cover, um, start thinking about assignments, start thinking about content week by week. And then with this large overview, I can kind of get a, a good sense of how it all relates and how it all, how it all fits together. So I like to start with this for all sorts of things. And it goes to, to um, creative uh, works as well. This one here is thinking through of an exhibition that I needed to plan. And so starting with sort of the main things that I need to uh, think about and then deadlines and dates on the right it, that continues and so here, here's a continuation of that so I start like on the left with very broad overview of things and then I start to use so different techniques essentially for for getting through and thinking through an idea a concept something you need to do you can use this for um for your units at the start of the semester thinking about what assignments you have and things that you need to get done or for breaking down any of your um, any of your projects, be they an assignment or a personal project. I start in the middle with the main thing and then branch out into different um, sub-segments and then um, sub-segments of those smaller things and then start putting together arrows of how things connect, how they relate. Uh, on the left, more of this. Uh, this is for um, things that I needed to do in my blog one of, that I would like to cover at a certain point. Um, as well as teaching stuff um, and on the right also more planning for teaching and so this is what works for me you'll find what works for you as well but this is part of a critical sketchbook uh, process it's not only just drawing it's also thinking visually so text writing is another another form of of thinking um drawing is a way of thinking all of these different use all of the tools that you have available to you to think through so you can see um this is what my doctor was on autobiography so a lot of, did a lot of thinking on that um things that are related with within autobiography and then um yeah and then i had to sort of create a reflection on my um doctorate at the end and more and more so you can see I do a lot of this. This one here is for, um, I'm currently working on a daily diary comic. Um, and you can see, so on the left, I'm just planning out day by day what happens. And on the right, you can see I'm sort of getting further into a specific idea. In this case, it was a couple of the comics, some of the text that I might use, plotting down some, some just getting a sense of sort of what camera angles might be useful to me. 
And so this leads you into the, your thumbnailing and sketch exploration stage. So here's um, some thumbnailing and, and sketching ideas for a cover, uh, a comic that I curated, and I had to um, put together the, the cover for that. At this stage on paper, I find it much, much easier um, to, to do this quickly and, and think clearly than, than going straight to digital. But there are times when, you know, I'll go to digital first, depending on what I'm working on. Different page layouts for a particular uh, page, and also just sort of sketching out um, a structure for the story that I wanted to wanted to tell. Um, here's a process of sketching that I use sometimes, where if I'm watching or half watching something, um, I'll just as the movie or te television show, or whatever is playing, I'll just sketch down really rough compositions and start to sort of get a sense for you know the way the camera's moving, um, and this can trigger and sort of um, strengthen some, certain compositional ideas that you yourself might have, and that includes just this process of constant sketching um, every all, all of the time, just to try to keep your hand active. So these are from, I believe this was the um, Daredevil television show uh, and, and so on, continually characters, backgrounds, compositions. And then this feeds through into um, my own sort of comic practice. So this was from a graphic novel that I worked on during my doctorate. And this is how I start to plan out pages, just very small. We call them thumbnails because you know, they're, they're larger than a thumbnail, but that gives you a sense of how small they should be. So you can have a complete overview of this story. Emerging your storyboards, for example, you can use post-it notes, or you can use this process as well, and particularly. As I've said, if you need to get down to six panels by the end, you're still going to start with many more panels and then start curating those um, selected panels down. And so at some point, in your mind mapping and your sketching, you'll get a sense of what you need to know. How do things look, different styles and stuff, and so you'll start curating images. And so one thing to keep in mind, definitely this is a little more advanced, but start keeping in mind is what is the sort of um, target audience for your thing? What style are you going with? Is it sort of a, a gritty game type of piece you're creating or is it more child-friendly? Or is it something else entirely like uh, this is Shovel Knight. It was an 8-bit style game, very um, very successful, side-scrolling platformer. There are an infinite number of choices of style and approach that you can use in your own creations. And so we'll look more at this in the coming weeks and semesters about developing style and exploring style. But it's something to start thinking about for now. So a lot of the time I find when people are doing a reference and research image creation, a lot of people will tend to just get examples from animation or get examples from concept art or whatever it is, the thing that they want to explore. But I just want to digress a little here. So if, for instance, you're creating a character design for an alien, I think a lot of the times we forget how amazing the natural world is. And you can look at, in this case, um, macro photography of insects and so on, and look at how these things might have been an influence for certain uh, well-known iconic designs. So this is H.R. Geiger, uh, concept artist and illustrator on Alien, on the Aliens films. Um, and look at what, what his inspirations might have been, where he got his ideas. You can look at insects, hives and so on as inspiration for the Matrix a lot of the design in that film was very, uh, very much based in this insectoid kind of world to give a certain creepy sense as well, or add to that sense. So this is concept design by Jeff Darrow, famous comic artist and illustrator. Or we can look at this as a close up of some kind of virus or bacteria, an extremely um, magnified image. And we can look at whether or not that was or could be an inspiration for things like the, the eggs in Alien. And we can also look at lighting reference. We can look at style reference. So um, these are images from David Lynch's Eraserhead. And this is really useful for looking at things like composition, for looking at um, stark lighting, uh, cheery oscuro lighting, uh, and all sorts of things. So you can look at the real world. You can look at movies. You can look at TV and games and animation. I thought 
would look at some case studies now of um, some of my projects and how I've gone through this mind mapping, thumbnailing, iteration, sketching, reference and research process. So we'll start with Queen Sparkle. This was a project uh, that I created or put together in 2017. It was a commission for a, an illustration for um, a professor who was retiring. Uh, and so her last name is Spark and she's um, very regal. So it was sort of Queen Sparkle was the, the theme for the illustration. And so this is my process of going through mind mapping and thumbnailing and so on. And then this digital iteration at which I printed that out and then prepared it for Rizzo print. So here is um, my initial mind mapping and thumbnailing process. And so I'm um, sort of looking at different representations of this person, just thumbnailing different ideas. I'm not settling on any one in particular. And you can see I'm using a combination of images and text, to figure out who is this person, what kind of shapes, what kind of imagery can um, represent her. And then on the right, you can see I'm looking at different associations with her. And then that led me to sort of obviously um, queen uh, inspired or relevant imagery. So I'm getting a sense of like what the pose might be, how she might dress. And at this stage, around this stage, I started looking at um, reference and, and research. And so you can see this um, process of iterating and getting a sense of what this illustration might be is continuing, trying, um, looking at different ways of um, composing the shot and so on. So here is some of my research images, um, a small selection of them. You can see I've got images of the queen, different ages, um, the sari. So this person that I'm illustrating wore, uh, visited India a lot and wore a lot of uh, saris and very beautiful flowing gowns. Um, she's a strong queen uh, developed through my um, mind mapping process. So I've got a sword in there or a shape of a sword. Um, she likes to, to drink uh, wine as most academics and so some, some glasses to use as reference. I've got some Art Nouveau imagery, which I find quite evocative and beautiful. And then I also wanted to, her to have like a hawk. And so I had to find a reference of a hawk. So all of this reference uh, image search will help you with costumes, will help you with um, different types of regalia and whatnot, different artistic styles that you can blend together. Uh, and obviously things that you don't know how to draw, like in this case, an eagle or a hawk. So here I've gotten as far as I can with my uh, paper-based sketching and iteration. I've got a sense of the image I want to make and I've created like a digital collage using this um, this backdrop that I want to pull some of the um, patterning from and then these key icons representing the character. And then in the middle I want to have a centerpiece of of her and so I've, I've put down one of the sketches um, here blown it up. I'm not going to end with that in particular but it's a place to start with and from there it's just a process of iteration and sketching and so I've, I've got the hawk in drawn him from reference. You can see I haven't just drawn around the outlines. I'm thinking about the shape and the contours of it. I'm trying to understand how it works in three dimensions. And then also an initial sketch of, of the character. I'm not really happy with it, but it's enough to start with. So I'm starting to use the research and references of the queen to start to think about what she's wearing, the sari pattern and so on. And here, here she is, I, I needed to capture her likeness. And so this is Andy Spark. So I've, I've taken that, um, use a hand particularly as a reference. So it was very good to have. Um, and then I've place like a champagne glass in here. You can see, so the champagne glass from reference, I'm going to use that. I've got the sword um, silhouette and I'm building it. And, and I just keep building this. I start um, ref, like merging the reference image of the background with my sketches, building them all into one piece. And so this is, this is my digital piece. And so what I wanted to do was create a Rizzo print from this, which is essentially like a, a, a mechanized uh, screen print. And so <clears throat> this printer can print different colors and uh, different layers of different colors. And so I wanted to create this Rizzo print. So I printed this out. I used a light box to put a sheet over the top and I drew two layers. One layer was just for the line work and then another layer was for ink washes. 
which I've done here. I've put them together and then this is the final piece. And then from that I could, um, could print a whole range of, uh, Rizzo prints, different colors and stuff from that piece, as well as have the original artwork at the end. A project that I worked in in 2014 was Wise Up Kid. This is a project that I was commissioned to work on uh, as part of an academic study and research project and a creative output. So I was brought on to create initial character designs and some of the key images and title pages and then also uh, a number of short comics and a, and a um, larger comic within that. So my first task was to create the main character who would lead the um, the reader through the story, like the unifying figure. And so the brief for the character was something like a sort of um, middle-aged, uh, burnt-out hippie. Yeah, and so... <laughs> Uh, so I looked at a range of references and uh, re did a bunch of research. Here's just some of it. So looking at some of the characters of that time, some of the things I would wear, examples from animation and comics, um, looking at style and and um, shape design and language, and, and then also looking at um, prototypical hippie outfits that someone might wear. And so then I had a character design an iteration process um, and so here's some different uh, face designs for the character I, I kind of wanted this um, pear shaped head uh, and like looking at different types of styles um, also different uh, different possibilities but I, I had a good sense early on of like the shape and the look that I wanted to get with this character uh, and you can see here um, some different iterations and and options and then also um, a bit of a like front end um, semi three quarter um, turnaround of the character and so more just getting a sense of who he is and getting closer to um, the finished thing the shape of the nose the proportions of the face and then working both digitally and traditionally in this in this process even things like the size of the eyes, we, we ended up wanting to go with these button eyes and then so like how large are they? What sort of shape and color are the eyebrows? And he ended up something like this. Um, he did tend to change, but this is from one of the, one of the sort of, um, signposting pages. This is Carlos, uh, in his little pink, uh, bunny slippers. This is a, another title page, like a con contents page for the, it was an app, like a digital app. So, um, so he's sort of composited here um, on top of a background. I will say with this one, the background image that I was given was kind of low resolution. And so um, it's created, it's not the most successful composite. He, you can blur the background, definitely background elements, but elements in the foreground should be, would be in focus or elements on his sort of um, plane would be, should be in focus. But that's okay. Um, yeah, and then so... Uh, reference sort of image search and research of sort of this um, different deities and gods and and um, the the uh, the app itself was uh, intended to be kind of mishmashing all of these um, parables and uh, and stories from different cultures and religions and and so on and had like a very religious bent. But a very universal bent at the same time. So, like looking at different religious symbols and um, pattern patterns and um, representations of gods and stuff. And so then, I had this process of trying to figure out what the title page would be. And we know we knew that we wanted it to be called um, "Wise Up Man." Uh, in the beginning, it ended up being "Wise Up Kid" to to be less um, specific, like um, less gender specific, but. Yeah, so um, just some iterating of ideas here. I'm using the symbols that I've put in the in the second one. I liked the idea of him sort of crouching. Um, I you can see in this one on the left. I just pretty much used the um, I used this sort of um, top right image here and just drew over the top. But um, you know, and then and I would use some of the colors as a basis if we went ahead with that, which we didn't end up doing. Um, the idea of him just poking out um, from this sort of visual um, optic uh, illusion type thing, this patterned checkerboard of symbols, and that was that was not bad. Um, and definitely, like the person who was commissioning this, liked the idea of like the peace signs and and the symbols and stuff. So we kept going, 
And then I gave him some designs of him sort of sitting cross-legged on like a little cloud here. And he, and he said, let's, let's go with that and using some elements from previous things. So you can see I'm going digital, traditional, digital, traditional. I, I just work with whatever's on hand at the time, whatever serves me best. And then so I'm starting to create lettering and there's a process, which I won't show you, but from this digit, initial digital st sketch, I finally arrived at the finished thing uh, here. And you can see it's gone through a lot of iteration, even between sort of this um, digital draft, this initial digital draft and the finished thing, there was a lot of iteration and looking at reference images and getting like the hands correct and, and everything took quite a while. So in the first few pages of the app, the um, title character, or Carlos, comes and, and, and leads the, um, the reader through this, through this little, um, to the beginning of the story. And so we wanted to do, develop some backgrounds that was kind of reminiscent of this Looney Tunes sort of, um, Wile E. Coyote style, um, backgrounds. And eventually, um, we, we scaled that back and made it a little more naturalistic, but used some of the sort of like, um, designs and stuff of the rocks and created some extra characters to go in there. For Carlos to meet, it, it was a, a three page story, but I'll just show you the first and third pages here. So you can see, um, you know, Carlos introducing the story. And then in the end, this kind of psychedelic flash as he um, says, time to wise up, kid. You don't need to create certain things like iconography, like architecture, like dress and stuff. So look at reference. Um, and then you can, and then you can create your own blend of elements and different styles and periods and stuff from that. But you need to, it, it's, it's helpful to start or at some point incorporate this research phase into your project, into your thinking, into what your output is going to be. I thought I would show you now my process on a three page uh, comic that I contributed to uh, called Universe Gun in 2017. And so initially we knew that for my pages, I wanted to have a very particular look. And so I've taken inspiration from a director called Taram Singh. So here's some images from his films and I, I use these as reference, not only for the shots and the mountains and the landscape, but also some of the cinematography as well. So here's some shots from one of his films, even architecture I was looking at. This was very, very much the world that I wanted to work with, some of the patterning and so on. And I also had certain things that I needed to include in this. I needed to have a spaceship that wasn't designed, so I needed to have a design. So instead of just looking at uh, concept art and the illustration, I looked at the real thing. And in the end, I ended up using this shot for, um, for the key panel. In, in the end, it was, it had everything I needed. It, it had this sort of futuristic sci-fi, uh, looking cockpit. Um, it had the, the pose, which, um, was also quite a, a difficult one to get that shot, um, that I would have needed in perspective with the, the cockpit. And so here's the first page, um, I've used reference for the, the second panel, the interior of the cockpit. Um, you can see I've changed the pose a little from that, um, but I've just, I haven't copied it exactly, but I've used it for the perspective and stuff. And even the shots of the landscape and, and that I've drawn from uh, reference images, including things like this. Then for the second page, I needed, uh, as you'll see, the chakras, the chakras, I needed some images. You can see the uh, tiled pattern in the lower right hand corner. I use this for some of the architecture and also for part of the costume and, and wardrobe research. I use real life burkas and from movies and stuff. And so you can see uh, in the top right hand corner, I've got these patterns. Um, I've drawn directly from other patterns uh, in my other sort of architecture image search. The second panel, um, where they're both sitting down, I used reference of person sitting in the lotus position. And I actually, um, for the person with their back to us, uh, used a 3D model in Manga Studio and positioned it to get the pose right. And then ironically just covered her in robes anyway. I should have used reference for the robes themselves to, you know, like set someone up with a cloth over, the, over them to get better reference for that. Well, that's okay. And then for the third page, uh, I needed some Shots of the skeleton, shots of the, the facial tissue, the fascia, um, a shot of a planet exploding, a hand, and, and some more costume reference from Taram Singh's uh, productions. And so this is also showing my process on, on this particular page. Uh, so I was working digitally to begin with for this. Um, I had a bit of a, a funny process. So digital to begin with, doing my rough layouts. 
Shots of architecture, the bottom left-hand corner was was taken from, from reference. And Manga Studio has some really neat perspective tools built into it. So it's, it's pretty quick and easy to map out map out your shots. And so just refining here, refining details, tightening and tightening, getting reference of the skeleton of the, the hands. And yeah, and then color. So from here, I would print this out and then put it on the light box and then draw in pencil over the top. And then I would digitize the pencils turn up the contrast and make them like ink layers. And then I would, I would sort of paint uh, digitally over the top, as you can see here. So adding tone. And so that was a great project. It was very small, as you can see, but I was using reference for all of the shots, all of the architecture. And I haven't included here, but there was also a mind mapping process, but I was working with a writer for this. It's his project. And so I didn't have to do much of that that initial stage it was more about finding the right reference images for my shots that i wanted to uh, that i wanted to use scars is a project that i worked on a couple of years ago as part of the squish zine brunstown comic anthology organized and populated with Melbourne, uh, local to brunswick mostly uh comic artists indie comic artists and so i wanted to make a two-page story um, the background to the story was that a friend of mine uh, had passed away not very long ago, quite young and quite uh, tragically. Um, and so I wanted to do something with that. And the theme of Squish Scene Brunstown was uh, comics of and around uh, Brunswick, the suburb. I knew that I wanted to use uh, architecture, buildings, and the settings of Brunswick. And I wanted to make sure that I got it right. So there's certain times that it's, you know, it's okay to make up architecture and whatnot. And there's other times, like in the case of this, where I really wanted to use the real thing um, and make sure I did justice to to those buildings. So those very cool buildings and stuff. So it's part of some um, photographs of the suburb buildings that, and, and facades that I found interesting. And then my process was to um, to draw over the top of those. Even with drawing over the top of something, you're still making choices about what lines to include, um, where you might exaggerate things or, or not, uh, what to leave out. You know, with photographs, there's a lot of detail, and so you have to you have to curate those lines that you put in, and those those that you leave out. So there's a lot of choices that are still happening with this. From there, I printed this out at a very fine um, blue line layer, which you can see in the middle image, you can still see some of the blue line. And then I just drew over the top with a pen. And once again, making more choices about what to leave uh, out and what to put in here again. And then I put it onto a light box and put a sheet of paper over the top, uh, thicker paper, and then I did ink washes. And so again, the finished output for this was going to be and was a Rizzo printed comic. And so I needed to have two layers. And because I was working traditionally, I had to do them the old fashioned way. So ink washes on one layer, line on the other. I knew I wanted to be, this to be set at night. And so um, that also informed the lighting, the tonal approach. Uh, and then I would composite those together as you can see on the left here. And so on the left and the right his composited line and uh, ink wash layers. And from there, I would just remove the, the blue color in the images digitally. So I'd scan it back in, um, remove the, the blue from the page, and then put another layer over the top for this character moving around the setting and for the lettering. So this is very short and sweet, but it goes to show, again, there are certain times that you might not to use reference. And it can be really easy to get carried away with using reference for everything, and that's not always necessary. Um, and, you, and it's easy to get caught into the trap of just drawing over the top. But what we'll look to do is get better at using reference directly where it's required, and then other times just sort of having it there to look to and to to keep in mind as you work along. So it depends on what you're, what you're doing here. And for what I wanted to do, I needed the real thing. Uh, but you can see, you know, I've, my line quality it makes it a little wonky. And again, those things that you leave out are just as important as the things that you uh, include when you're drawing from, from reference images and photos. 
I'm going to talk now about a comic that I made in 2019, or it was published in 2019. It actually took, uh, it was a long project, it took about two years all up from beginning to end. It's called How to Have Better Arguments uh, About the Environment or Anything Else. This was commissioned by The Conversation, which, is, and so I was working with uh, a few other academics in different fields in biology and psychology to put this together and essentially they came up with the story and then I figured out how to, to make it a comic and so that in a lot of reference and research and uh, we knew that we wanted to um, create archetypes for different groups of people so we had miners we had farmers we had you know like industrial types business people doctors and general everyday people and so you can see um, from the sort of middle left uh, beginning just very basically and using real icons, thinking about what icons we can associate with each of these different groups of people, these different classes of society, and then creating a little more detail and trying to get a sense of who these characters are and, and a more personal approach to each of these different groups. And you can see in the top right corner, we've got a uh, couple of our main key characters. We've got the, the farmer uh, type and the um, industry slash miner type. And then down on the bottom right, you can see um, color codes for each of these different characters. So the local colors of each of the different characters that I would be able to just um, color pick from each of these as I'd go through the final thing. And, I, and I've only included a tiny portion of the actual research that I've done into um, the different costumes and outfits and, and so on here. But essentially I had the scripts of what would happen and sort of a dot point what needed to happen and then like figuring out a way in this thumbnail stage from keeping things quite small so I can just think about and you know, get caught up in details, but what are the main beats of the story and how can we represent those? And so here I'm drawing on a whole range of different symbols and metaphors for each of these different ideas. A lot of things that are um, kind of common and universally understood despite culture and stuff. There were like a lot of parameters within this that we weren't, we weren't putting blame on any different type of people or group or anything. And it was about fair representation across the board. So here's my initial thumbnail sketch um, and then doing some shorter storyboard sort of so different ways of thinking through the stories, um, different key moments that I might have thinking about poses and, and so on. And then I would go through the process was that on, on the left here you can see I started um, traditionally. So I did my roughs digitally and then I used them as a, as a guide to do my traditional sort of like pencil and ink and ink washes on paper. And then I would scan those in and then um, add color digitally. And so the cool thing about this process is that as soon even because I've got my values down on the paper, I don't need to do much thinking in the color, coloring stage. I can just drop you know, like the same color um, across the across the costume, um, and it and it, and you've got the tonal variation and stuff. So it's it's fine. And then like you can just use a few blend modes to create um, gradients and and um, there's something called gradient maps, which are also quite useful. So you can see in the bottom right corner, there's a gradient map on the um, minor, for example, like this sort of pinkish gradient map, just to create this sense of aerial perspective. And scene. So this was the process. Um, in the top left corner, you can see um, the globe inside the globe looks a different line quality from the line around it. And that's simply because I initially just drew the, the world as I sort of remembered and then I checked and it, and, and apparently I, I don't know what the world looks like at all. And so, um, and so then I just got reference of the world of the globe and then, and then did that um, digitally. And I did that a lot of the time. So the soccer ball was digital. Um, and there's a lot of tinkering even with stuff, um, but you can, you can do that easily and, and things like, so I have this stairway to escalation. Um, so the nine steps of escalation shown here, we've represented through a stairwell and initially I drew the perspective for this. Um, and then I realized that it was completely off. Um, after looking at it for a little while. And so then I went in, found a reference image of stairs. It's kind of a tricky perspective. And so there's certain things that you don't need to do. And, and also to speed up time. So then I just 
put that into the digital file and then draw over the top. And it's a, it's a much a better result. As the, And the thing to remember is that a lot of the time, we won't notice when things are right. Um, it's this idea of like, if you walk into an apartment or a house and there's a fish tank, you probably won't notice it as much if it's clean as if it's dirty. Um, and if your perspective is off, people will pick that up very quickly. And so sometimes you can use research, you can use reference just to make that process a, a little easier for yourself. Now let's have a look at Entwined. So Entwined, full title is Entwined, A Recurrent Romance, was written by his artist and writer, um, who I worked with on Universe Gun when I did a guess uh, three pages for his comic. And so Entwined we work on, worked on together and it was a 32 page, is a 32 page comic uh, set in the not too distant future about gods and fate and love and um, quite an ambitious project. So I had a, a really huge um, reference and research phase for this project. There's just a very tiny um, sample of those images. So you have got architecture from um, this sort of Charles Rennie Macintosh architecture from the Glasgow Art School on the top here. We've got influence on character design from Patrick Nagel with the uh, the woman in the in the top middle. With one of the characters was uh, always depicted with a cigarette in her hand, so a lot of references of uh, hands holding cigarettes from different angles. Uh, workshop interiors, fancy apartment interiors. We had jaguars. We had Aztec temples. The comic had everything. So the reference the image search was all about style, it was about using um, a reference of perspective and, and architecture and, and insights and stuff that you, I mean, you don't need to come up with this stuff yourself. It exists. So in this uh, example here, you can see I've used this interior of this warehouse, which was very much suited, like not only um, the perspective, the perspective that I wanted to get for this large lofts, um, but also some of the stuff from inside of this sort of like industrial uh, type of technology. Um, and so you can see like in the bottom left corner, my initial uh, used digital line work and um, in the beginning traditional ink washes, but then I just migrated to digital ink washes. A rough draft here and then a bit more of a cleaned up version and on the right and so this um, image on the right it's only going to be viewed like it's one panel in a comic and so it doesn't need to be super detailed but you've got a sense of depth I mean you can't you can't go wrong with that sense of depth if you're using an image that has depth in it other than just sort of placing the characters within that Here's another panel from the comic. So this is inside um, their sort of little uh, secret headquarters. So I use this um, workshop interior uh, for some of the background uh, items for the perspective and just for, you know, all these cool like um, in industrial um, shelving units and tables and bits of equipment and stuff. I couldn't, I couldn't invent that. Um, quite so well and this will give you all ideas even I used laptop that was on the table there this industrial kind of lamp there um, yeah you can you can use whatever you like and then the chair I think I just invented that and other things uh, this is a, a page where they um, are, are Dear protagonists are chasing um, this middle-aged man in a cat suit magical cat suit over the rooftops it's a very serious comic as you can serious comic as you can tell um, and so I, I wanted to um, use this sort of like Parisian rooftops. I, I thought that just looked so amazing and so cool. So a lot of um, images from that, even um, video reference of people doing sort of parkour over the rooftops for some of the panels where we needed to get shots from, from that first point person perspective as they're chasing him through the city. And, you know, like this top panel, I mean, it, to, to work all of the perspective out for that and do it myself just would have taken so, so very long and I, and I wouldn't have done as good a job. So I just, I spent quite a long time, um, I wouldn't say tracing over the top of a photo. You can see I've like added line wobble and, and made choices on what to include and what not to. But you don't want, you don't want your reference, um, drawings to clash with your normal drawings. And so that, that can be a real challenge. Often when we draw over reference images, sometimes it really stands out if it clashes with your own style, and I've found that quite a bit. So a lot, I made a lot of effort to try and make it a little bit wonky. 
here's the time lapse um, of a character design. So for this character, uh, and you wanted to get a sense of who she was and stuff. So we, I use uh, this actress Helena Bonham Carter as a as a sort of as a reference. I really liked the face shape. I liked the the, the big eyes um, and the expression that she has a lot of the time. So um, yeah, just it, this was in the beginning stages with all of the characters. I, I had a lot of um, work in trying to to get um, to understand what they look like and their personality and how I might convey that in the drawings. And so you might also have this um, as an as a important part of your sort of drawing process in, in terms of like if you want people to, if you want to stay on model and particularly uh, if you go into animation and, and 2D drawing animation, um, staying on model is, is tricky. It's tough. And so that, that leads to um, creating model sheets and so on. And you can also just use photographs of say a certain celebrity or a friend or something. It's even better if you can, um, if you have a friend, someone that you know that can pose for you uh, and you can stay on model in that way. And so in this, in this process here, I'm just sort of um, doing a rough sketch. You can see I'm just, I'm sort of going with the roughness of it. It's a bit of an experimentation as well. And I would, I would say yeah, all of the times, um, remember this should be, this should be fun. This should be fun for you. So to end up, let's just go over the process. So you want to start with an overview of uh, your project. What is it that you want to achieve? What are the different things? They might be criteria. It might be an assessment thing. It might be a project. So what do you need to cover? Then you're starting with a process of mind mapping and sketching, getting a sense of the beats of the story, for example, or um, whatever it might be, uh, sketching out ideas and thumbnailing ideas. And this process will work hand in hand with uh, a reference and research search. So um, they are interchangeable. You'll be using both kind of concurrently. For example, you'll be um, thumbnailing ideas and then you'll realize that you need reference of cinematography, architecture, costumes, whatever it might be. And then that you'll bounce back from that to your thumbnail and sketching stage. And then at some point you need to start the iteration of whatever it is that you're working on. So you'll use your reference images as I've described uh, as required. Sometimes you'll be sketching directly over the top. Other times you'll just be referring to them. And then the iteration process, which is uh, something we'll cover more in the coming weeks and semesters, different ways that you can iterate ideas traditionally and digitally. But this is the main thing of how you get started, planning your projects, making sure that you have all of the correct reference images for the thing that you're trying to create. Hopefully that was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in class. Thanks a lot.